Now, when we talked about undervolting, all right, here's how you undervolt. That's it. What's up everyone, I'm NoBS, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get the best performance out of your Radeon GPU. Apologize to any subscribers that may have been waiting on this video for a little while. I am currently in the process of moving, so the whole place is sort of in disarray. You probably don't care about that, so I'm just gonna talk about that in another like vlog type video or whatever. The reason you're here is probably because you either recently purchased a Radeon graphics card and you're looking to get the best performance out of it, or you are delaying the purchase of a new graphics card and you wanna get something that will make your games a little bit more more playable in the meantime. The topic of overclocking and undervolting can be very daunting. I have a lot of friends that have built their own computers. I have zero friends that have attempted any sort of overclock or undervolt on their system. There's a lot of stigma. People feel like this will reduce reliability. It might damage their hardware. It's gonna be a big pain. Some of those things can be true, but not all of them. So I'm going to explain a little bit more about what that means. First of all, let me talk about what overclocking and undervolting actually is. So here's basically how graphics cards are produced. AMD, or NVIDIA, maybe Intel eventually, produces a chip. They do a lot of extensive testing on this chip, and then they realize that it will perform somewhere between certain boundaries. That, that chip is then sent off to board partners like XFX, ASUS, MSI, PowerColor, you know the drill, and they will design a board and cooling system that they think will work well with that chip. In some cases, those manufacturers will do little tweaks and maybe increase the performance a little bit, and they'll call that overclocking, which technically speaking, it is, but not really that much. A lot of the times when you hear about manufacturers selling hardware in bulk, where their advertising is overclocked, it's really more of just a little boost. It's almost like a car company running some code on your car so it'll produce a few more horsepower. They're not pushing it to the limits, they're just getting a little bit more performance and that helps with marketing. And also a little bit in games, but not really a ton. Anyways, what I'm gonna be talking about here is getting your graphics card set up for the way that you want to use it. There are a few different priorities that you might have with your card. Um, there are some really basic things that I'm gonna be talking about first, which will just be pretty much free performance that a lot of people don't do. And then there are gonna be some more complicated things that will require a lot more trial and error and can net you better frame rates. It can make your graphics card run cooler, or you can do both if you really hate yourself and you're like me and you just wanna tweak things for a long time. It's possible, it just takes a while. So there are two things that you wanna do before we even start talking about your graphics card. And those are enabling DOCP or XMP and enabling smart access memory. The very, very brief overview of those, DOCP or XMP, just depends on your motherboard, what they call it. That just allows your RAM to function at the advertised clock speed. If you buy 3,800 megahertz RAM and you just pop it in your system and turn it on without changing anything, it will run at 2133 megahertz. So you have all this extra performance and speed that's not being used because you have to enable a setting. Very, very easy. This is not really even considered overclocking. It's, it's really just using the RAM at its advertised speed. That's extremely simple to set up. It is literally a click or two in your BIOS. The other thing that you wanna do is enable smart access memory, which is also called resizable bar or resize bar in ASUS for some reason. Brief rundown of this one is it allows your GPU and your CPU to communicate more quickly, which will also improve frame rates and overall performance. This is also something that's not really considered overclocking. This is just a feature that's been built into PCIe for quite a while, and it's only more recently been started to be talked about and kind of optimized for, so go ahead and enable that. Once you've got that really basic stuff out of the way, we can get into the actual overclock slash undervolt section of this. Now here is step zero. Before you touch any settings at all, think to yourself, what do I want my graphics card to do differently? You gotta really take note of this one. I swear to God, if you don't do this, you're gonna be fussing with things for hours. The basic rundown is that you can either focus on overclocking your system to improve performance. You can boost clock speeds. You can try and get uh, higher frame rates, usually at the expense of some extra noise and higher temperatures on your GPU. This can have minor impacts on the longevity of your graphics card, but obviously it will improve your frame rates. On the other end of that, you can try undervolting. 
Undervolting doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get worse performance, but it does mean that you will be pushing less voltage to your graphics card, which results in less noise. Your card will run cooler. It will generally last longer. The only downside is that you won't really be improving your performance at all. Like I said earlier, if you really hate yourself, you can try doing both. This is by far the most difficult thing to do. Just want to give you full awareness of that. If you try and do an overclock and undervolt, you're going to be trying to use less voltage than the card initially used and increase the performance. That is what I did because I hate myself. I don't necessarily recommend that you do that, but you can. Another quick note is I would strongly, strongly recommend that you download some sort of a benchmark tool. I personally use Heaven. Uh, this is a very old benchmark test, but it's still pretty good if you just need something that will stress your system. I've heard a few people talk about how you should just play games instead of using a benchmark. I am not a big fan of this. Now, the big reason I don't recommend playing games is because at some point in this process, I guarantee you that your graphics card driver will crash. Now, that sounds really scary to a lot of people, but it's not really hurting anything. Basically, all it means is that your graphics card was trying to do something, it ran into an issue, and then it ends up usually resetting itself to the factory defaults. Um, that's really not that annoying to deal with if you're just tweaking some settings and running benchmarks. But if you're trying to play a game and kind of enjoy yourself and also keep an eye on frame rates and then make sure that you're not crashing and then see if you have to adjust anything or maybe you forgot to note things, then that's... Don't put yourself through that. Just run a benchmark for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, see if it crashes, and if it does, go in and tweak settings. Anyways, first thing we're gonna do over here is jump into our manual tuning setup. I want to make this as easy to follow as possible. So what I'm going to show you is a couple of things that you can do without having to fuss with anything else. First things first, we wanna take our power tuning uh, limit. The, this is a percent limit slider. You can literally just slide this all the way to the top. Basically 99% of the time, this is gonna work fine. Um, the power limit is really indicated more by your specific graphics card. So if I had maybe say an MSI or an ASUS card, I might be able to drag this out a little bit higher. Um, that just depends on the way that the board manufacturer set up their card and how much they and how much extra power they want to allow it to use. This is just going to allow your graphics card to use more power when necessary, but it actually won't really impact how much power it's using if you're not doing anything. The next thing that we're going to do is this can vary between different graphics cards. If we go into GPU tuning, I'll full size this for you, you can see that it has minimum frequency and max frequency. This will sometimes vary based off your card, um, but if you have this, then here's how we're going to do this. So you can see that the current max frequency is 2559, and then the minimum frequency is 700. Now, a lot of people recommend that you slide this up, and we'll actually I'll just type this in. So I'm going to put in 2459. This is basically just going to make sure that the graphics card is operating within a certain region. So when I'm in a game, it's not going to go from nearly 2600 megahertz down to 700 megahertz. Let's say that you're going to load up a cutscene or you're just going into a new environment. The GPU might throttle itself back because it says, I don't really have to do anything right now. And then when it has to jump ahead to try and compensate for all those graphics that are on screen, that's when you can run into some little hitching. It kind of looks like things freeze up for a second and they fix themselves. Um, that can be fixed just by adjusting your power limit and just by adjusting these minimum and maximum frequencies. So we can go ahead just like this and apply that. And again, about 95% of the time, this is gonna run just fine. So here's where I'm gonna draw your attention to voltage or millivolts you can see here. So this is set to max right now, 1150. And I believe that this is the stock setting that this card will run at. Now, when we talked about undervolting, all right, here's how you undervolt. That's it. Okay, that's not actually it, but that's basically what we're going to try and do, is we want to try and get this from this large 1150 millivolt number down to something that is more reasonable. On my card specifically, I found that it runs just fine with a small overclock at 1090 millivolts. So that's a pretty big margin. 
The thing about voltage, when you have more voltage going through your card, is that voltage creates heat. That heat will cause it to spin its fan faster. And in some cases, it can even thermally throttle if it gets above a certain heat, and then you'll end up reducing performance. So just by doing that little thing, uh, you can potentially increase performance, but definitely run a lot cooler. So for the process of undervolting, and this kind of goes for overclocking too, is you want to reduce things by kind of a reasonable margin. So the Radeon cards tend to be kind of overvolted from the factory. So I would feel comfortable probably dropping this down to about 1130. And we'll just apply that and we'll kind of see how it runs. As long as that doesn't crash out for a while, then you're probably stable and you've successfully undervolted your card, which is exciting. Um, and how far that you want to push this is totally up to you. Now, the main goal with undervolting is trying to reduce the amount of temperature that is uh, going into your card. And you can actually see on the benchmarks I did in Forza that even though I was getting worse performance with the default setting, I was actually getting higher temperatures. And that is 100% because of higher voltage that was just unnecessary and not doing anything, just creating more heat in the card. Now, as far as overclocking goes, you're pretty much going to take the opposite approach. You're going to try and drag this out further. So I'm going to try and put this at maybe 2655. And I'll bring this up to... So we'll do... We'll do 2665 and 2555 here. Bonk. And we'll apply that. And we'll see if that runs stably. Now, there's only a certain amount of headroom. The maximum I could overclock this is to 2,900 megahertz. That's because it is locked from the factory. That is the most overclocking I could do, unless you wanna get into uh, finding a new BIOS that will allow you to overclock further. What I strongly, strongly recommend doing is as you are messing with settings, when you find something that is stable or that is close to how you want it to do, you're going to want to go up here and do save profile and i recommend saving this to your desktop and you can just make this you know semi stable whatever you want to call it um and you could just stay save a copy of that i actually have a copy on my desktop right here of my regular overclock and undervolt you can see here's exactly the settings that i normally use and if ever my system were to crash or settings were to reset for whatever reason, I don't have to go through all the work of changing all these things, which is super, super handy. Now that we've covered all that, we can start talking about VRAM tuning. Now, I strongly, 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 strongly recommend that before you touch anything else, you want to make sure that your frequencies and voltage is locked in. You want to make sure that that's stable and that everything is working just fine. I would recommend stress testing it for a while. I actually do really like this little built-in stress test feature. You can set this to go to like five minutes um, and that ends up, I've actually gotten, experienced more crashes out of that than a lot of benchmarks, which is a good thing because that means that uh, there might have there might be a crash that only presents itself in certain weird environments. Um, the, the reason I do like benchmarks though is you can actually see in real time how your performance is increasing uh, or if it's staying stable. So that's a nice that's the nice addition with that side. Anyways, once you get to your VRAM tuning, um, you basically just want to see how far you can push this. Yeah, the default uh, VRAM speed is 1750. Um, so I was able to bring that all the way up to 1900, no problems. I, I've heard a lot of other people with RX 6600s being able to push this all the way up. Um, that's generally something that's common. If you do try it at 1900 and you run into issues, you can just bring that down exactly the same process. You just want to do little, little reductions and kind of figure out where it is running uh, stable. All right, lastly, but not leastly, my favorite thing to tweak in this, because it's so rewarding, is fan tuning. I really hate when things are unnecessarily not loud or annoying, especially when it's my computer that I'm using all the time. The big advantage with undervolting in particular, I had so much trouble saying that, is that it allows you to reduce how loud your system is, which is really great. First things first, if your computer has this zero RPM feature, turn that off immediately so basically what this does is that the fan on your gpu will not actually start spinning 
until it's at maybe 45 or 50 degrees Celsius, which is really too high. Looking back at my Forza gameplay earlier, when I was in game, I don't believe I went above 50 or 55 C so having that like that just all the time is stupid now as a byproduct of companies putting too much voltage and producing too much heat usually the fans will spin a lot faster than they really need to when I first got this graphics card on the default settings it was absurdly loud it was when i was in benchmarks it was just absolutely screaming so i was able to get that engineered out if you happen to have an xfx um 6600 what i can tell you is that you want to go ahead and reduce the maximum fan speed to but da 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 60 percent and what i like to do is just sort of kind of bring this down so it's kind of linear so it's just kind of a nice line and this will just have a, a nice linear progression it won't go boom it'll just kind of slowly progress upwards as the temperature rises which is nice and with this kind of setup i've been getting very very reasonable temperatures i think the maximum i've seen is maybe 63 degrees celsius which is uh very respectable. Quite honestly, this can be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. If you want to get the best performance out of your card, you can spend a lot of time messing with things and trying to squeeze every little additional percent of performance out. But uh, if you want to just do a little bit of tweaking and, and kind of learn a little bit more about what these settings do, then you can easily have this done in 30 minutes and be happy and on your way knowing that you tried something and you learned something new anyways if you guys enjoyed this video feel free to check out the rest of my channel i will probably be doing some more performance tests with this card soon maybe i'm also moving soon i'll be talking about that anyways i still don't have a good outro so i will see you guys soon click the subscribe button and uh, i'll see you soon bye bye